Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We will be continuing with our theme for this week. And our theme is Rich Man. F.D. Ploth. Uh, that's the name of the rich man. F.D. Ploth. P-L-O-T-H. And that uh, F.D. Ploth is an acronym and it stands for Faith. Diet, that PLOF stands for prayer, love, obedience, thoughts, and hope. The reality is, uh, by God's grace, we are rich men. We are rich people. We are F.D. PLOF. Uh, that acronym describes us. Oh, by God's grace. Our subject for today is diet. Diet. Let me tell you something, folk. We absolutely cannot talk about this subject too much. I said we cannot talk about this subject too much. That's right. God help us. <clears throat> Diet has ruined and will be the ruin of billions. I'm talking about and their loss. God help us. This thing of diet. Let me ask the question. Must sinful human beings hasten their own death? and bring to themselves all manner of diseases on their way to their death? Must they do that? Is that a must? Most human beings are not in control of themselves because they are controlled by and they are obedient to the taste buds of their perverted appetites. Thus they kill themselves. And God will hold us accountable for destroying his temple, his hands, and his feet, which is our bodies. You know, our diet, listen to me carefully, our diet determines how efficient we are and our service to and for God. That makes it pretty important. Our diet determines how clear our minds are. Our diet in a very large way determines how apt we are in understanding spiritual things. That makes it pretty important. We clog up our colons. We clog up our nostrils, we clog up our veins, we clog up our arteries, and we clog up our brains by the way we eat. I'm talking about physical bread and mental bread and spiritual bread. We clog up. You know, too often we eat for taste. We eat out of greed. And it is not for life and for health. I don't care how healthy it is. If we don't like the way it tastes, we'll throw that thing in the trash can. Avoid eating it at all costs. Doesn't matter that it's healthy. Extremely healthy. Exceedingly healthy. The truth is, we are what we eat. And I'm talking about physically, but I'm also talking about mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We are what we eat. <clears throat> so we should be very careful about what we eat, what we take into our bodies and our souls. It determines what we are, and it will be evidence of whose we are. You got to understand that your body is the home and temple and dwelling place of God. God doesn't sit around in some building all week 
a building that we have built for his service, a building that we have labeled a church. God doesn't sit around in there all week waiting for us to come once a week or twice a week. God owns your body, for it is his by creation, and it is his by redemption. He created it, and then when we sold ourselves to the devil, he came and bought us back, paying the money of his life and blood. It's his, our body is his twice. We do not own ourselves. Your body, my body, is on loan to us by God. And he wants us to take care of it and use it correctly. And God makes a promise. God promises you, listen now to this promise. God promises you that if you destroy his home, if you destroy his temple, if you destroy his dwelling place, which is your body, he will destroy you. Solemn. God is not a toy. He's not to be played with. Let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, Lord, bless us. Open our eyes and our minds to reality. Help us to know how important this area is. How absolutely important it is. <clears throat> and then govern ourselves accordingly. We are not our own. Even our bodies have been loaned to us by God. Take care of me, tells us. And then he tells us how to do it. And we are sore tempted to do it our way, a different way. Do it like the world does it. Does it in, do it in a way that just feels good to me and tastes good to me. And by the time we're finished, we're listening to the devil and we're destroying, the devil knows it. We're destroying God's home, God's temple. We make it inefficient. We make it incapable. We make it crippled up, broken down, diseased, sickly. Lord, help us. Weak, feeble. We do it. Simply. For the most part, by what we eat. And then we make excuses. Oh, it's in the genes and all oh, this and that. Oh, Lord, help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's look at some scripture. And uh, I said in our introductory statements that we cannot talk about the subject too much. It is of that greater importance. The inspired writings tell us that if we can overcome in this area of appetite and diet, we will overcome in every other area. Help us, Lord. Every other area. But if we don't overcome in this area of appetite and diet, it will be our ruin. You know, in the area of diet, that's where... Sin started with Adam and Eve. You realize that? In this area of diet, appetite, it's where Jesus started when he started gaining the victory for us. It's that important. That's why we said FD plus. Faith brings you to God. Faith brings to you the gift of God. And then you need to focus on adjusting your appetite, not just your physical food, but that's so important, but mental and spiritual and emotion. You got to be careful about what you take in because you are what you eat. I want to go back and look at the original diet. You know, God didn't leave us in the dark. He didn't just put man here and he, he's got to wonder about what he should eat. <laughs> and let's look at it in Genesis chapter 1. Verses 29 to 31 in the Bible says, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, uh -huh. and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. 
And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now listen. And God says, to you it shall be for meat. And he wasn't talking about dead animals. See, I've given you something for food, for nourishment. It's every herb bearing seed, which is upon all of the face of the earth. On vine, on a tree. That's your meat. That's your food. You know, when God gave flesh meat, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why he gave it was to cut man's life short. Man, you used to live almost a thousand years. God said, no, it's too long. It's too long. God had the ability to preserve stuff so he could stay eating pure vegetables and, and fruit. He, he could have done that. He needed to cut his life short. Give him grace period. Give him probationary time. But don't let it be too long. And even the animals at creation, he made them vegetarian. He gave them the herb, the green herb of the field. That was their meat. They weren't eating each other. The original diet is the best diet. We got to know that. And one other thing I want to say quickly. This thing of cooking our food. We think that we can't eat unless we cook. Major deception that the enemy has convinced us of. If we would just learn to eat for the most part, because some things you got to put a little heat to, to put it in the condition to eat. But that's not most of it. If we would just eat the food like God prepared it, we'd be healthy. It has the proper nutrients. It has the proper balance. It balances the oil with the fiber. God knows how to prepare the food. And so he prepared it and said, gave it to man and said, eat this. Oh, no. Oh, no. We, we, gotta, we got more sense than that. So we got to put the heat to it and cook all of the nutrients out of it and then eat the residue. We, we gotta make all we gotta make our own concoctions. Take a little bit out of the soybean, take a little bit out of the wheat product, take a little bit from here and from there and from here and from there, and we make a concoction, and then we say, it's vegetarian because it's not dead animals. And it's a concoction. No bulk in it, no roughage in it, usually. And we say it's healthy. We cook it, cook it, cook it, cook it. You know what I mean? Fix it up so it'll taste good, taste good. That's the major thing. It tastes good. It got to taste good. God is the chef. God know how to fix food. Eat the food the way God has prepared it and we'd be healthy. Oh, Lord, help us. Now, after sin came, God added the animal's food to man's diet so that he would be healthy while he's dying. He doesn't have to be sickly and diseased. He needs to die of old age. Not from sickness and disease. But anyway, he added the animal's food. What does the Bible say in Genesis 3, 17 through 19? And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. On your way back to the ground from which you were taken, <clears throat> the way to sin is death, die you must. He said to Adam, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and not to me. We can't listen to what other folks say. We got to listen to what God says. I don't care who they are. We need to listen to God and follow God and obey God. That will bless them who's telling us wrong. We need to listen to God. But because you've listened to the voice of your wife, and you've eaten that which I told you not to eat, cursed is the ground for your sake, for your blessing. In sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Not for a few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years, 
all the days of your life, and then it's going to bring forth thorns and thistles. That's the problems and vexations and trials and tribulations. That's for your good, though. It's for your sake. And then I'm going to add to your diet the food that the animals eat. That's your medicine. That's going to keep you healthy while you're dying. So God added to man's diet animal food. But it's all vegetation, food from vegetation. And then God makes a promise to us. Let's look at it in Exodus. It's Genesis, Exodus. All right. Early on in the Bible, God makes a promise to us in Exodus 15, 26. What does it say? And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments, and keep his, all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's the promise of God. I need you to just focus there for a minute. That's the promise of God. I will put none of these diseases upon you. And we have them all. Why? Is God uh, less capable today? Is, is God not telling the truth? Is the diseases an inevitable? We got to have it. That's what we believe. That's what we've taught. Oh, you got arthritis because you, you're that age. You got this because you're that age. Eating everything under the sun, eating everything but what God said, eat, but, but we say, oh no, it's inevitable. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have all this stuff. But God said, I'm gonna put none of them. That's what God said. Now, either we believe God or we don't, because most of us don't. We believe you gotta get it. You have to die of some sickness. You have to die of some disease. You know, people say, you gotta die of something. They're blind. How about old age? How about it's your time and God allows you? He puts you to sleep like he did Moses. He said, I'm the God who heals you. That's what I do. I'm not going to put any of the diseases upon you, but we got them anyway. The fault has to lie with us. Let's look at Psalms uh, 105 and 37. I want to make a point here. What does it say? He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. This, this text tells me, that when God delivered his people, he also brought upon them healing. They, they weren't eating proper diets in Egypt. So we can't say that they came out and nobody was feeble when they left Egypt because they were eating the ideal diet. We can't say it. They even talked about we'd like to go back to the flesh pots of Egypt. All right? In the deliverance God gave them also healing so that there was none feeble, none, not one, not so much as one feeble person among them. And he gave them silver and gold. They went out with plenty. And he gave them health. He gave them all of that. He gave them the silver, the gold. They didn't have it. And plus, he gave them healing. He gave them health. Nobody was feeble. Ah, uh, oh, that it were so amongst us as God's remnant people. Uh, they were on their way to the earthly promised land. We're on our way to the heavenly promised land. We've been delivered. We have to go through this world of sin. They went to the wilderness of sin. It was actually called sin. We have to go through this world of sin on our way to the heavenly promise, just like they went through the, the wilderness of sin on their way to the earthly promised land. Nobody feeble. Nobody feeble. Help us, Lord. Let's look at Psalms 78 and verse 23. Let's, let's see what the psalmist says about the diet God gave them on their way through the wilderness of sin to the promised land. What does it say? Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven, man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. He sent them meat to the full. You know, they're traveling through the wilderness. The wilderness of sin. Look at it. That's what it says. The wilderness of sin. That's what it was called. They're on their way to the promised land. He gave them meat to the full, but it wasn't dead animals. It wasn't the blood and flesh of dead animals. That's not what he gave them. The psalmist says he gave them the corn of heaven. That's what he would give us. <clears throat> Uh, man did eat angels' food. See, God wants us to eat correctly. And he provides us 
our diet. He tells us with great specificity what to eat. You know, what we have to do is be like Daniel. Of course, we've mentioned a number of times there's a diet mentioned in prophecy. And the effects of that diet is also mentioned in prophecy. We're students of prophecy as Adventists. We need to look at the diet that God gave man originally, and we need to look at the diet that is recorded in prophecy. That diet that has such great results upon humankind. Uh, Daniel chapter 1 and verses 8, and then I'm going to skip down to verse 12. What is it saying? But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. <clears throat> Prove your servants. Put us to the test. Give us pulse to eat. That's food from vegetation. That's what it is. That's what pulse is. Not some little creamy stuff. No, it's food from vegetation. Let, us give, let them give us pulse to eat. And water, not soda. Water, water to drink. The Bible says Daniel purposed in his heart this day. Some of us on this line need to purpose in our heart. That we will not any longer defile ourselves. Let's not be like Adam and Eve. The inspired writings tell us that they thought that in such a small matter there could not be such great consequences. That's what they thought. It's just, just a little thing. That's what we do. It's just a little thing. It's, it's just a little bit. And we need to be like Daniel, purpose in our heart. We are not going to defile ourselves. Lord, help us all. And what was the results of just eating in harmony with God's law of health? Daniel chapter 1 and verses 14, and we're going to end up on verse 20. What does it say? So he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none, none. like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the musicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. God's original diet given in Eden, the diet talked about in prophecy, pulse, food from vegetation, and water, is the ideal diet. The Bible says they were... Stronger looking and better looking, healthier looking, just to look at them. They were healthier, and that's because they were healthy. And then their minds, in all manner of wisdom and understanding, the king found them ten times, not twice as smart, ten times better, ten times wiser, ten times smarter than everybody else in all of the kingdom. God says if you eat right, he's indicating to us who study the Bible that you'll, you'll be better, you'll be healthier, you'll be stronger, you'll be ten times wiser in spiritual things. They understood prophecy. They understood the word of God. And let me tell you what God says himself in John 3, verse 1, and chapter 1 and verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Uh, that's why we put FD, put the diet second. Faith is first. Faith brings you in harmony with God, in union with God. It brings to you the internal, indwelling God. And then, diet, man. You got to be careful what you take in. Physical diet, that's important. But the mental and the uh, emotional and the, the spiritual, be careful what you take in. Because God says, I wish above all things. And that's pretty high. Above all things, this is what I wish. Not only do I want your soul to prosper, but I want you to be in health. And we're all sick. Huh? They, they, look, I know everybody wants to be right, and they've never done anything wrong, and they're, they're, they're somebody else's fault why they're sick. 
It's just always that way. It's, it's in the genes. It's in, and some of that's true. But not, not like what we're saying. We want to bear no fault. None. Zero. We just want to be innocent. It just happens. We're sinful and we got all kind of stuff to make ourselves be innocent. God says, my will is that you be in health. God promises, I'll put none of the diseases upon you. And we got them. Why? Why? It's disobedience. In the end, Revelations 21, 4 through 7, uh, it's going to be a whole new environment. And we're in preparation for that. Let's look at it in Revelation chapter 21, verses 4 through 7. What does God say? And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, nor neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. One day soon, Jesus is going to stand up and say it's done. Probation has ended. The time itself has come to an end. It's done. All that I needed to do and can do for mankind is, is done. It's, it's finished. Now I'm going to give you of the water of life. You see, we don't have to approach that time sickly. Now some of us are sick. And God is with us. But don't act like we are totally innocent in putting ourselves in that condition. What we need to do is repent of it. Lord, forgive me. All those years I did X or Y or Z. All those decades I used to do this and eat that and take this in. God forgive me. That's what we need to do. Not make excuses. But I've never done anything. I always ate healthy. It's a lie. God said, I won't put any diseases upon you. We got them for a reason. And God says, one day, I'm going to wipe all tears away. There's not going to be any more pain and sorrow and crying. And it will be no more death. But while we are on our way to this temporary death, it's really a sleep. For Jesus said, whosoever believeth in me shall never die. So it's only a sleep. On our way to this temporary sleep or death, we ought to be healthy. Die of old age and die because it's our time. And die because God said, okay, it's the time. Not because of some evil disease, Lord help us. He promised he wouldn't put any of the diseases upon us. He, he declared that I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. He's talking about old folk too. God help us to believe what God says, not man says. Believe what God says, not what usually happens and what tradition is and what present reality is. We believe that. Everybody's sick. So therefore we believe we got to be sick irregardless of what God says. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we are thankful for your word. Help us to know that your word is reality. And help us to order our steps in your word. Lord, give us health. Heal us. In the deliverance of Israel, there was also healing. That's why there was nobody feeble. Even though they had that... Uh, foolish diet in Egypt for years. God healed them. He delivered them and healed them at the same time, and nobody was feeble. Oh, Lord, deliver us. Heal us, and then put within us to be faithful to the best diet. Help us not to settle for something that is really going to work against us, but we say, well, God gave man permission to eat it, and so we destroy ourselves. We don't, we don't eat the diet that's mentioned in prophecy. We don't want it. We're slaves to our taste buds. It doesn't taste like we want it. We won't eat the food the way you have prepared it. We got to alter it and change it. Move around the ingredients and cook all the life out of it. Lord, help us to learn. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, saints.